welcome back folks hope you're doing well and uh, today we're going to be revisiting something very similar that we've already done on the channel but not quite the same thing uh, we're actually going to be making a delightful loaf so there's no messing about with uh, these loafers oh not those kind of things we're actually going to be making ourselves a delightful brioche loaf but it's not going to be any old brioche loaf oh no we're actually going to be filling it with some cream cheese and some strawberry jam so technically a brioche strawberry cheesecake loaf i guess and i know you're thinking oh, brioche again really trust me i'm going to be changing your minds very very quickly check out this little bad boy Yes, that's right. We're going to be turning that brioche loaf into a beautiful stuffed French toast with even more jam, even more cream cheese. It's just, it's just getting way out of control. Let's start this video already. So the first thing we want to do is make that beautiful tangzong paste ready for the brioche. So grab yourself a small pan and weigh yourself 90 ml of milk or six tablespoons, 30 grams of plain or all-purpose flour or quarter of a cup, and also as much as it's funny throwing your loafers around, don't forget to put them on as well. One pinch of salt, and then grab yourself a spatula and pop this onto a medium heat, cooking it out for about five minutes until it's pasty. No, I'm not gonna show my pasty legs again. So once your paste is nice and, um, well, pasty, pop that into a small tub or a ramekin dish. And then you wanna start heating up the milk ready for the yeast, obviously a clean pan. 125 ml of milk or half a cup, 60 grams of fine granulated sugar or caster sugar, which is a quarter of a cup. And then you want to heat that on the stove onto a medium heat, just for a couple of minutes. You don't want it on there for too long because you want to bring it up to about 35 Celsius or 95 Fahrenheit. So if you need to use a thermometer, go for it. And the reason why you want to get it to that temperature is for the yeast. So if you get it too hot, you could potentially kill the yeast. If it's too cold, then the yeast will take a long time to rise. So I find 35 Celsius, 95 Fahrenheit, perfect temperature. So while you're waiting for that to heat up, you're going to need 500 grams of strong white flour or bread flour, which is about six cups. Actually, it's four cups. And also don't forget about your milk because literally it does take about a minute to heat up. It won't take you very long. Also, if you're worried about the sugar not quite dissolving, don't worry, it'll carry on dissolving once you take it off the heat. So once that's at the right temperature, you want three teaspoons of dry active yeast. And then you want to give it a stir until the yeast has dissolved. Also, don't forget to take out your eggs because they need to be room temperature and your butter needs to be soft. I do this every time without fail. So once your eggs are at room temperature, your butter's soft, you've called yourself a donut 20 times, grab yourself your KitchenAid. And if you haven't got a KitchenAid, then uh, you're going to need some elbow grease. Attach the hook attachment, then carefully start adding the sifted flour, followed by that Tang Zong paste, and then pop the mixer onto a low speed. And just give this a mix around for about a minute. Next, we're going to go in with the yeasty milky mix. And if you feel like you need to power up this bad boy a little bit more, feel free to do so. Just don't go too wild with it. Next, you want to add your three room temperature eggs, minus no shells. And then we want to start adding our softened butter, which is 113 grams or half a cup, little by little. So after a couple of minutes, it will eventually form together into this nice, beautiful, soft, beautiful dough. So very lightly dust the work surface with flour and then carefully take out the dough. And then you just want to carefully roll it up into a nice little ball and then gently cradle it in your palms until it forms a nice, plump, delightful ball. So gently pop this into a large bowl with just a small dusting of flour over the top. Cling filmed and put somewhere warm where it can double in size. And this is gonna take about roughly an hour or two. So next we need to get the strawberry jam on as we need to let it cook and cool because we need to get it in that loaf before we start rolling it. So we're gonna need a pound of strawberries, which is 454 grams, fresh or frozen, whichever you prefer. And we're just gonna very carefully take the tops off and then just cut in halves or quarters, depending on the size. Next, we're gonna need 200 grams of caster sugar or fine granulated sugar, which is one cup. And then we're going to need one teaspoon of lemon juice, catching the pips. 
And if you're thinking, what's the lemon juice for? Basically to activate the pectin to get it nice and thick. So we're going to pop this onto the stove, onto a medium heat. I'm going to cook this down for about 20 to 30 minutes, give it a little stir as well. And you might think it's going to need some water. Absolutely not, because the juices from the strawberries will come out. It'll start cooking down, but make sure you give it an occasional stir. So now the strawberries are on, it's time to do the second filling, which is the cream cheese. And it's pretty straightforward. Powdered sugar and cream cheese. So we're going to need 226 grams or eight ounces of cream cheese. Flop. And then grab yourself a spatula just to help soften the cream cheese up. And then we're going to add three tablespoons of powdered sugar or icing sugar. And then give that a mix until it's all incorporated. Oh, and also don't forget to add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract as well. So once your jam gets to this stage where it's almost about to start catching, you want to take it off the heat. Look at that beautiful, glorious jam. And then you want to grab yourself a bowl with a sieve and just drain off that excess liquid with the jam. And make sure you keep this syrup later on because you're going to need it. So our brush is almost double in size. So we're going to get our bread tin and we're going to give this an oil up. And all you're going to need is about half a teaspoon of olive oil, canola oil, whatever oil you've got in the house. So there we go. Our brush is doubled in size. And if you're wondering what on earth are those holes, that's why. So carefully take out the brioche from the bowl and being as gently as possible, knock the air out of it. Maybe gentle was the wrong word to use. And then carefully fold it up into a nice little ball again. So what we're looking for is pretty much rolling this out to the size of the tin. We don't want to go out any further because it will hang over the tin. So we're looking at roughly about the same width. Or shall we say length? About the same length. And then just lightly dust in the work surface with a little smidge of flour. And then grab in your rolling pin. Just give it a nice roll out into a nice long rectangle. And if you're wondering how long, you want it about two times the width of the bread tin. So just very thinly spread that beautiful cream cheese all over the dough. Also, don't forget to keep half back for the filling for the French toast, or you could double it up, entirely up to you. And then goes on the strawberry jam next. Now comes the fun part, the rolling. So just very carefully roll this up. Give it a little squash in between and then carefully pick it up and drop it into your tin. And it should just about fit in there. So there's our beautiful loaf and we're just gonna brush the top very, very lightly with a little smidge of oil and then lightly put cling film over the top to help this proof until it's doubled in size. So this should take about 30 to 40 minutes to proof, depending on how warm your kitchen or wherever you're putting your delightful loaf. So while that's proven, we need to preheat the oven to 160 Celsius or 320 Fahrenheit. So this is going to go into the oven for about roughly 20 to 25 minutes till golden crisp and looking very delightful. We'll also take it out of the tin and put it back into the oven just for a further five minutes. So we're going to pop this in right now. And I bet you're thinking, where's the egg wash going on there? It's not going on because due to the sugar and the butter already being in there, it's still going to brown up very nicely. We don't want to brown it too, too quickly. But of course, we're still going to add that buttery goodness afterwards. So while we're waiting for the bread to finish up, we're actually going to make the mix for the French toast. So we're going to need two eggs, 200 ml of milk. Well, maybe, yeah, well. So we have to finally get more milk. 200 ml of milk or one cup. And also one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then give that a little cheeky whisk. Goodness me, this is coming out a real treat. So we're just gonna take this out of the tin and let it cook for another five minutes in the oven to finish cooking. So it's finally out of the oven. And considering this loaf is a very adventurous brioche loaf, considering I haven't tried this out before, I haven't practiced it, it actually came out pretty good. I was a little wary about it collapsing on the inside, but it was actually held together nicely. So we've got to let it cool down now. And if you're wondering, where's the swirls? Well, I can tell you right now, it is spewing out the side, just a little smidge, but it is still holding together. And now you could say I could have added the egg wash, but I actually knew that I shouldn't due to us having little hot spots in the oven. So kind of glad it didn't go with the egg wash today, but we still got a nice, beautiful crust. 
and a beautiful colour. And once it's slightly cooled down, not forgetting, brush that bad boy with some beautiful, delightful butter. So finally, it's the moment of truth. And now it's either hail or fail. So uh, let's have a look. So first slice, but we haven't got to the swirl yet. But that brioche is looking fabulous. Oh my goodness me. That delightful swirl has come out an absolute little treat. So kind of good and bad. The only downside is it has slightly sunk on in the middle, but the flavor is there. It is cooked all the way through. A little less time on the proving. But other than that, it's turned out fantastic and we got ourselves some two lovely slices, still some beautiful jam and the cream cheese in there so we can make our French toast. So grabbing that spare cream cheese, just spread a little bit on the middle on one of the first slices and grabbing yourself a tablespoon of that beautiful jam just to go on top and trying to avoid going around close to the edges as it would probably seep out but you want to keep it nicely tucked in and then we're going to heat a non-stick pan onto the stove onto a medium heat once that pan is hot we're going to add a tablespoon of oil and then followed by the butter just before we put it in so we got our egg mix so just very carefully dip the sandwich or shall i say the french toast into the egg mix, flipping it over. And then we want to add some of that leftover butter that we had straight into the pan, followed by our beautiful French toast going straight in. And obviously without making too much mess. And then you want to cook this for about three or four minutes each side until nice and golden brown. And then just giving it a nice little quick flip. Oh my goodness me. Look at that gem right there. And then it's time to slice this little bad boy. And then we're just gonna cut this straight in half. Oh my goodness me. Look at that. What an absolute diamond. And then just finished off with a few delightful fresh strawberries. And you remember that strawberry glaze we strained off on from the jam? Well, it's time. And there it is. There is that delightful French toast from the brioche, strawberry and cream cheese loaf. And then we stuffed it with strawberry jam and cream cheese French toast. Oh my goodness me. Maybe a little step too far, but what do you think? So I don't know about you, but I'm ready for this. So I'm just gonna take a little snippet off the end. I'm not gonna eat the whole deal. Otherwise I'll be rolling on the floor and playing on the floor. That beautiful brioche, the nice crunchiness on the outside the glaze, the cream cheese, the strawberry jam. Here we go. Oh my goodness me. Mm. That beautiful buttery brioche as well. The crispiness around the outside of the French toast, the fresh strawberries, that little strawberry glaze as well that we saved adds a nice little sweetness to it. Oh my goodness me. You gotta give this a go. Give this a try. But if you're not as wild as me and you wanna do just a proper straightforward brioche loaf, I do recommend it. Maybe I've gone a little too wild this week. So there we go, folks. That's it for this week. A little bit more wilder than per usual, but still turned out fantastic. If you want to give this a bash, feel free to do so. Or if you want to make a regular brioche loaf, that is absolutely fine. The list of ingredients will be below in the description box as per usual. Also, if you want to catch me on Twitch, I'll be on live Monday to Thursday, cooking some delightful dishes starting at 10 a.m. Mountain Time. The link is in the description box below as always. And in addition, if you want to like the video and subscribe to the channel, always appreciated. And until next week, folks, stay awesome, happy, and amazing.